entrepreneurs, are you trying to make bigger profits in your small business? If you're like most of us business owners, increasing your profitability is always on your mind, and you're probably looking for more ways to grow your revenue while growing your company. Well, you've found a podcast that shares ideas to help you do just that. I'm Marcia Reiner. I'm a business growth strategist, and I've helped tons of small business owners to establish and implement a tangible plan that guarantees increased profitability, guides your growth, and plans for your future exit, because building a profitable and sale-ready business creates a win-win scenario. That's more money now and a windfall later when it's time to let go. And I look forward to sharing strategies that I've learned with you on today's Profit with a Plan podcast. But before we get started, I've got some exciting news. Please mark your calendar. I've got an amazing business acceleration event coming up on Saturday morning, July 15th where myself and three other experts are going to be sharing 12 costly profit-killing mistakes that are stalling your growth. Join us for two short hours with four experts and 12 powerful strategies that will help you accelerate your business. Because you know it only takes one to change the course of your business in your life, but we're giving you 12 to choose from. The registration page is up. And for my friends here listening, if you type in the code PROFIT with a capital P, you'll get a 75% off discount code. So register today at joinaccelerateNow.com. All right, I have a guest on today. You guys are so, this is gonna be so exciting. I'm really excited to hear this. So Chris Beal, Chris is for the past 30 years has participated in software startups as the founder or at the very early stage of development. His belief that the most powerful part of any software system is the human being that we inappropriately call the user. And that key uh, value key in software is to let the computer do what it does well, go fast without getting bored, and in order to free up the human potential. Toward that end, uh, Chris has been involved in a whole lot of companies, big companies, uh, that he's uh, had under his uh, list of accomplishments. Uh, we were just talking, he's had patents that are out there, and he's just the quiet man behind a whole lot of software and a whole lot of training. He's currently the CEO of Connect and Sell Inc., based in Silicon Valley, and hosts a fellow podcast, right? The Market Dominance Guys.com. Chris, welcome to Profit with a Plan podcast. I'm so excited to have you today. Marcia, it's great to be here. Thank you. Okay, so um, as we were talking uh, briefly in the pre-call, um, you're pretty uh, you're pretty infamous in the world of creating software and processes for folks. How in the world did you get into that space? Well, it's kind of funny. I I studied <laughs> physics and math in school, and I wanted to be a physics teacher at my old high school. And my physics teacher, Mrs. Wilcox, Carrie Wilcox, as I got, got to know her when I was student teaching under her, took me aside at the last moment and said, I'm not going to let you do this. I want you to go <laughs> start companies. And it was kind of funny. She said she was an angel investor. And I asked her, is that like a good business investing in angels? I, I didn't know <laughs> what she meant. This is a long time ago. And she said, no, no, no. I invest in my former students if if I assess when they're my students that they have kind of entrepreneurial skills and capabilities. And you're at the top of my list, go start companies. So, you know, what was I going to do? So I, I went out to do that sort of thing. I joined up with a couple of big companies, NCR and then Martin Marietta and Bell Labs, and then went out and started doing, you know, software startups. And wow. the number one thing you learn in software startups is what you learn in every startup, which is it's all about sales. Hmm. Hundred percent, but man, what? It, so she's not an angel investor per se. She's the angel they got you to yes. move in the right direction. Yes. I love that. Wow, teachers have so much impact on our life that sometimes we we don't even recognize it. So thank you, teachers out there. Right? Um, cool. So yes, sales. That's the foundation of everything we do, and the reason we open our doors every morning and come to work is to make sales or acquire customers. So I think you have a really cool method that um, you base everything on, and it's 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 involving something about trust, right? Yeah, so I'm in the B2B world. I don't know anything about business to consumer. I'm a horrible consumer, and <laughs> as a result, I think I would be 
incompetent at doing anything in B2C, but I've been doing B2B for actually almost 40 years now. And so what I've learned in B2B, I think a lot of people know, but it's it's kind of tricky to codify it. Anthony Iannarino and his new book, Elite Sales Strategies, his introduction opens with this quote, which is that people buy from people they trust to make a decision they don't trust themselves to make. And when you think of it that way, that's a high bar for any of us who are selling in B2B. And the reason is when you're a business buyer, you're putting your career on the line. It's not your money. It's your reputation. It's your kid's college education. It's your retirement. And <laughs> so every time you go to buy something for your company, you're taking a big risk. And you can't be the expert. Otherwise, you'd be the seller. So you have to choose an expert. So how do you choose an expert? Well, you find somebody you trust enough and enough means more than you trust yourself like if you went to a brain surgeon you'd have to trust them to do a better job you know operating on your brain than you would if you just like pulled out a you know a drill and a screwdriver and went after it yourself right <laughs> so watch the youtube video on how to do it <laughs> yeah, rah, 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 right? there you go. so uh, you know it's a, it's a big it's a big deal trust in business to business sales but the real question is like everything else where does it start Mm. And I asked Chris Voss, the author of Never Split the Difference, on how to negotiate as if your life depends on it, FBI uh, guy, the, the top hostage negotiator in the world. I asked him one night, lucky enough to be there in a dinner event, how long do we have to get trust in a cold call? And he said, seven seconds. And just like that, he didn't think about it. He said, seven seconds. And I said, really? Because our research says eight seconds. And he said, your research is wrong. It's seven seconds. <laughs> and I'm looking down, you know, is this his first bourbon or his second or his third? Because it's kind <laughs> of like... So I asked him, well, what do we have to do in those seven seconds? And he said, oh, that's easy. All we have to do is show the other person we see the world through their eyes. We call it tactical empathy. And then we need to demonstrate to them that we're competent to solve a problem they have right now. And I thought about it for a second. I said, well, isn't the problem they have right now me? And he <laughs> says, bingo. That's why you can never fail on a cold call. If your goal is to create trust, you can always do those two things. So just do them. Wow. Okay, done. That's a wrap. That was that was the whole, no. <laughs> wow, that was really wow. powerful because- Seven seconds is is in a, almost a blink of an eye. It's very fast. And to be able to disarm them in a way to say that I get you, Mr. Client or prospect, and I understand the challenges that you have, then you could spend the the eternity or you know the next 10 minutes on proving your competency. It's only that first seven seconds, correct? That that sets that all up, right? Right. It's really interesting because the the path, no, I'm in the business of, of helping people have lots of conversations. That's what my company does, right? So I have a lot of data to work with. We do about 50 million fully navigated phone calls a year for business sellers. And that generates this vast amount of data. And we connect about 3.3 million conversations. So that's even more data. We get to listen to them and put them through AI and do all that kind of cool stuff that people do nowadays, right? So what we've learned from all of that is that the path that we're all taught in sales to be on in a cold call, especially in cold calls are pretty much the only way to make brand new customers. You can get lucky and have them come to you, but you come right down to it. If you want to go after targeted people, the folks you really need in your business, you know, as your, as your partners effectively by becoming your clients, or your customers, you need to make a list and you need to reach out to them. And email isn't great anymore because it's gotten so polluted. It's so noisy. And social has just turned into email. It's, uh, you know, every cheap way of getting information between one person and another turns into spam very quickly. This has been true forever, by the way. Most graffiti, you can call it street art, but it's kind of spam. You know, they're sort of shoving it in your eyeballs. So here we have this one medium that can't become spam, interestingly. And it's the human to human one to one phone call. It's just you and me, we're talking, but I don't know you yet. And you don't know me and you're afraid of me if I call you because mm -hmm. I'm an invisible stranger. You want to get off this phone with your self-image intact. So how do we negotiate from that position to potentially exploring business value? 
it's really delicate. It's very tricky. You have to be very, very good at it. It's like, I don't know, it's like figure skating. You know, you can go watch somebody do it, but try to do that little single axle or whatever those crazy people do. And you're going to discover it's a little harder than you think, right? And it's like that. It's very athletic. It's fast. And you've got to get it right. And you have to practice. But if you do, you can actually get somebody to trust you 100% of the time in seven seconds. And after that, what do you do with it? That's, that's sort of the next question. And the answer to that is, if you go down the business value path, you start talking to them about your presumption about their business problem, you'll lose the trust. Mm -hmm. So you have to find another path that doesn't lose the trust. And that path is curiosity. So if you start with their fear and you turn that fear into trust, and then you turn that trust into curiosity, you have a pretty good shot at getting commitment to speak further on, on matters of substance, not the kind of stuff you'd talk about on a cold call. Wow. Okay. Again, boom, we're done. Um, all right. So you mentioned that that we're going to have some sort of a, a practice rehearsed uh, single axle that we're going to land cleanly and, you know, arms out with it without touching the ice. We're going to get something of trust built in the first seven seconds. And then from there, we're going to build on this curiosity. So I'm wondering, does it matter what kind of product you're selling or the price point that you're selling? Or we know we're going B2B, at least in our conversation today, but I'm sure you could use this conversation with the consumer as well. But it, it's, does this work across the boards for everybody? As far as we can tell, yes. Uh, my my wife decided to try it. So she decided, her, she's, a big Guinea time, pig. <laughs> she's a big time sales manager. She wrote a book, Love Your Team, uh, a survival guide for sales managers in a hybrid world because she's such a great sales manager. I urged her like, why don't you write a book so people can see what you're doing here. And so she decided to try this crazy thing we do where you push a button and you talk to somebody in about three minutes. And so she did weeks of research on all the people she wanted to talk to. And she's very thorough. She's an mm -hmm. MIT trained mechanical engineer who was carrying a $5 billion quota when I met her. Wow. So like, you know, she's two, a, two smart people connecting. How amazing is that? <laughs> she's a beast of the world, I can tell you. You don't mess around with her. So but she decided to try this. And afterwards, I asked her, well, what was it like? She took about an hour and a half, two hours. And as we say, pushed the button right, and talked to people. She said, first, it's the greatest weight loss program ever. Your heart rate goes up to 160 <laughs> without going to the gym. And the, I said, well, okay, that's interesting. But what else did you learn? She said, what I learned is, all you need to know is that other person is a human being because mm -hmm. you have the undivided attention of somebody that you thought highly enough to put on a list. And that's magic. Wow. That, that's what it's really about. So yes, does it work in all circumstances? Yes, as long as you do it right. Mm, I think that's the, that's the magic secret. You know, people... Um... Uh, let me just say myself, because I'm not going to categorize everybody out in the world that feels really icky when they're making those cold calls. Um, but I love the way that your wife explained that it's just somebody you thought was valuable enough to talk to that you put on a list and they're a human, right? Yeah. And they answered the call, they picked up the phone, you picked up the phone and you're like, hi, it's, it's, it's the worst first date ever. Um, and so I could see why your wife's heartbeat was going, you know, at 160 beats without, you know, probably sweaty palms, you know, the whole thing, <laughs> you know, because it is such an uncomfortable start for any kind of relationship. And I think if you can knock down all those chirping stories that are going on in your own head, when you're talking to them and think that they're just another human who you could solve a problem for. Um, I think it's supposed to make it easier, right? It is, but it takes practice too. It's mm. like a single axle. It's like you you can have good intentions, but you have to have technique. <laughs> so, and you know, you gotta you gotta build up the uh, the skill and the muscles that do it. But it can become quite comfortable, but it never should become completely comfortable because, after all, you're stepping into the role of the worst thing in history and prehistory, which is the invisible stranger. There's mm -hmm. nothing worse when you think about it, right? In the environment of evolution, like we live now in a world where even out here where I live kind of in the country, there are lights, electric lights. 
and we don't have <laughs> working that water. Tools. Yeah, and, and there's <laughs> exactly. So you know we're kind of used to illumination, but I used to do a lot of mountaineering. I used to do a lot of like climbing in the big mountains, right? And at night it's dark there, and if a stranger showed up, they're invisible, and you don't trust them. You don't want them there. And if somebody shows up in your village and you can't see them, that's because it's nighttime. And they're not there to bring you a Bud Light. They're the bad people from across the river. They're here to kind of like change the demographics of your village suddenly and violently. We don't like it. And we don't like being the invisible stranger because we know that we're scary and nobody wants to be scary, right? So we're apprehensive about making that call and apprehensive that somebody might answer, which is funny because that's the whole purpose. I have, to, I have to agree with that statement. You're holding your breath. I hope I get a voicemail, right? You know, so I could just hang up or leave a message depending on your process. But it's like, you know, that's, it is. It's it's incredibly scary for me. And I know I'm not alone out there. So how do you make it not scary? Well, first, make it easy. Uh, that's our whole thing at Connected Cells. Just make it easy. So you take the excuses out. It, which makes it a little scarier, right? I'm going to push a button and talk to somebody. So it is a little scarier. I'm going to ambush myself and them at the same time, you know, <laughs> peak, right? But the, it's one of those things where it's like, imagine if you wanted to be a surgeon, you really, you know, you really care about helping people. But think about it. You really care about helping people by cutting them open with a knife. Hmm. That's kind of weird when you think about it. So what's the good part? You think that you have the intellect, the skill, the desire, the passion, whatever, to do this difficult thing, but you have to overcome that natural hesitation, that natural fear, that sweaty palm thing that comes from opening up another person with a knife. I mean, fortunately, they put us to sleep when they operate on us normally. <laughs> so uh, I'm and not we screaming. Don't have to, have to watch that for, you know. That poor surgeon is is trying to overcome one more time their reluctance to do this, and then the sight of blood, which is always an issue. So, how do we handle that repetition? We need to have something repeated, and having somebody by our co side coaching us, mm. because we're much more comfortable doing something uncomfortable when we're there with somebody who does that uncomfortable thing a lot, and they're supporting us. So, when we're learning to cold call. It's good to have somebody with us. And we have people who serve as coaches for folks. My wife uh, worked with Cheryl Turner, who's a, she's a very famous cold caller, probably the, maybe one of the two or three best in the world. I think she's the best in the world. And so she served as Helen's coach. It made all the difference. Mm. And after a while, you know, the training wheels come off and, and uh, then it becomes fun. Then you push that button and you go about your business. And then when it goes bloop, in your ear and pops up on the screen and says, hey, you're talking to Marcia. What are you going to say? It just comes out. Hey, Marcia, Chris here. I know I'm an interruption. Can I have 27 seconds to tell you why I called? What are you going to do? Right? 27 seconds. Okay, go. <laughs> okay, go. And I'd say, hey, Marcia, thanks so much. I believe we've discovered a breakthrough that completely eliminates the waste and the frustration that keeps your best sales reps from being effective on the phone or even using the phone at all. And the reason I reached out to you is to get 15 minutes on your calendar to share this breakthrough with you. Do you happen to have your calendar available? That's it. Wow, that was easy. Yes. That was easy. How come it doesn't feel easy when I do it? Because I <laughs> feel like I'm like this icky person. Hi, I'm Marcia. I'm here to, I know you didn't expect my call. I'm here to take three hours of your time. I'm going to sell you my crap. <laughs> You're going to buy today and I'm going to make you feel really bad about it. <laughs> I mean, that's probably, yeah. that's probably that's going on, you know. That's what's and, going on. That's it. But you have to know, like if somebody meets with you, they take that meeting, they take the 15 minute meeting, the 30 minute meeting, you have a hundred percent certainty they're going to get value from that meeting, even if they don't buy anything from you, right? That right. meeting is a high quality product. That meeting is enlightening. That meeting they walk away from that. Even it's like, hey, Mercy, I'm never going to do business with you. Sorry. But they've learned two or three things that only you know. And they're confident in them because you taught it to them. So you've got a great product always, which is the meeting. Mm. Now, do you, do you know what the value of the meeting is? Most folks who cold call don't actually think about the meeting as the product the same way they would think about 
some other product, but it has features like, you know, you're going to, they're going to learn something economic about time or money or risk. And they're going to learn something emotional about something that's bo- you know, that bothers them all the time that might go away if they were to avail themselves of what you offer. And they're going to learn something strategic, some roadblock that's in their way that it might go away. So those are three valuable things. Can you name them? If you can name them, you got a great product. It's called a meeting. Mm-hmm. I love it. And it is, it sales or or the process of sales is usually just moving them along in the process of getting closer, building the relationship for them. Rarely, unless you're Amazon, do people go onto Amazon and click buy right now off of the first meeting. They're wanting more information. They're wanting to learn about how you can solve their problem. Is the problem even possible to be solved? How much does it cost? How long will it take? Will it hurt? You know, I mean, there's so many questions the buyers have, even B2B buyers, that I love the idea. I'm just booking the next meeting. I'm not closing it right away until we get to that time where I feel like you've gotten enough information from me to make a valid decision. And I've presented an offer to you. Now it's now the next thing is you want it or you don't. Right. I mean, and I think that's it in our mind is we've got to stop thinking that old dating analogy, right? You don't walk up to the, to the guy or the girl at the bar and go, Hey, let's, uh, let's go get married. Right. You don't even know their name yet. It's usually, Hey, what, tell me about yourself, you know, and you work through the process. And I think we all forget that. I think as in sales, we have a problem like a dog does when it's got a piece of meat on the other side of a chain link fence. <laughs> I want to back up and we could go see the gate and go through it, but we don't do that. We push our faces into the fence and try to go <laughs> and we get all bloody and we don't like it. Right. And, you know, it's funny in B2B, this B2C is like this too, to some degree, but B2B is really like this. If you've just gotten a solution to a problem that somebody else is now going to offer you another solution to, right? You got one last month, you bought it last month. You're not in the market for another one of those for three years. Mm -hmm. That's just how B2B works. The replacement cycle for all solutions is roughly three years. Well, if you divide that into quarters and say the consideration period for a new purchase is about one quarter, about three months, you're not in the quarter where they should be considering your offer 11 out of 12 times. So if everything's perfect, you only have a one in 12 shot in this quarter. So now the question is, are you going to nurture that relationship? So when they're ready to buy, they buy from you, or are you going to educate them and then ship them off to your competitor in quarter two, three, four, five, or six? You have a choice. You can work for yourself in the future, or you can work for your competitor in the future at your expense. Wow. You're giving us some really juicy awareness here, Chris. I mean, you're telling us all about the things that we probably already know back here, but we neglect to execute on uh, most of the time, at least, you know, the the people I I run across, you know, because it's so we, we, we don't think about planting the seed for the future, right? Nurturing the, the relationships so that you can have it later on. Um, kind of like the retirement plan that you talked about earlier, you know, you put money in today. So it's there later on when you need it. Same, same, same concept here. So I'm going to ask you, I'm going to shift gears here just a hair because you have, you have alluded to something that you've talked about a couple of times that, you know, the hardest part of, of getting in front of a client is getting in front of a potential client. And you keep mentioning, all I have to do is push a button and then someone's on the phone. Can you tell me a little bit about that? Because you've kind of hinted to that a few times and I don't want to leave the listeners hanging. Oh, sure. So I I run this company called Connect and Sell. I've been here for 12 years. Um, I started as a head of products. No good deed goes unpunished. They made me CEO back in 2014. (laughs) And what we do is we let a salesperson, B2B salesperson, push a button, they load a list, usually out of their CRM, but it can just be a file. And then when they want to talk to somebody, they just push a button and then go about their business. They can pet their cat, drink their coffee, send an email, stretch, good idea, stretch, moving is always good, a little movement. And then at some point, bloop, there's a little tone in their ear and it pops up on the screen and says, hey, you're talking with Marcia or whoever you're talking with, right? That other person has answered in a way that indicates to our system that's the right person. You got the right person on your list. 
Now, what's going on in the background is quite complex. It's a, it's a big global, it's called a mechanical Turk. It's a system that has got a lot of technology and a lot of AI, and then it has humans in the loop where they're needed. Say somebody needs to ask a gatekeeper, operator, or whatever for a transfer. We have, a, some, we have somebody do that. But our people never speak to your target. So it's very, it's very subtle. So you, as the user, push the button and wait. And just relax if you can. <laughs> or your heart rate goes up to 160 beats per minute. <laughs> first, first time you, you're going to be shaking a little bit after a while you get used to it. So it's like taking a, you know, I once had the opportunity to take a Ferrari 455, I don't know, a Formula One course. I thought I was a driver until I got in that seat. And then I realized I don't know anything about driving, right? It's, yeah. So it's like that at first. And then it all slows down just like that, right? After a while, six, seven laps, you're going, oh yeah, I can, you know, I can hit the brakes that hard. I can scare the living daylights out of myself. So it's a, it becomes kind of relaxing. Um, I've been in situations where one of the reps who works for us, because we use our own product, we talked to 106,000 VPs of sales last year with a team of 10 people. That's, that's amazing. That's it. That's how we go to market. We just talk to people. And there was a, a big um, sales expert who wanted to talk to one of my sales reps. Well, he was just having a conversation with him. And suddenly my rep, Kyle, just his pupils get big and he just starts talking to somebody else because he has a headset on, right? He's not even looking at the screen. He just goes, hey, Kyle here from Connect. So I know I'm an interruption. Can I have 27 seconds to tell you why I called? And the sales expert is just baffled. He said, what just happened? I said, well, you know, that's the beep. He pushed the button. He got the beep. And he's talking to that person. He set a meeting with them. And it was one of those life-changing experiences for the big wow. sales expert. He was like, this isn't even remotely possible. Well, that, wow. by the way, that young sales development rep who was working for us at that time is now the vice president of global business development for a public company. So he's, he's done well. Because when you practice talking to people, you're practicing what senior executives need to learn which is how to talk to people, strangers, effectively, right? We call it finishing school for future CEOs. I love it. I love it. And you know what? It is right on point because the phone calls and getting past the gatekeeper and getting to the person we want to talk to is always the, the discouraging, you know, dial for dollars kind of thing that, you know, after a while you're like, I've made 30 calls and nobody's answered. This doesn't work when the 31st call would have had the person on the phone probably. Right. And your system does that for you. But I love the skills of being able to feel comfortable to say, Hey, would you be open to booking a 15 minute meeting with me? That's the whole purpose of the cold call is to book the next meeting. And I think that that just takes all the, the stress off of the reason that you're calling. Now you can have stress when you're booking your 15 minute meeting, you know, that's a whole nother set of stress. But I think the seven seconds that you, you say that that easy phrase of saying, Hey, I know you're busy. I caught you at a bad time, you know, or, or I haven't hope I didn't catch you at a bad time. You know, here's this, however your script goes. That's amazing. It is simply, it is simple. It is simple. I wrote a blog piece seven years ago, I think it was on this. And the title is five sentences that will change your life. And the reason I said that was I kept seeing this change people's lives. It's so simple. And yet it's so delicate because you're going through four full emotional states. The other, you're taking somebody on an emotional journey from fear to trust, from trust to curiosity and curiosity to commitment. And you're doing the whole thing in about 35 seconds. It's, you know, it seems impossible, but a lot of high skill activities seem impossible. They just do. When we watch people do things, I mean, the, the whole world of, of sports, right? Uh, my old favorite team. <laughs> my golf Denver game. Nuggets. Yeah, they, they, the Denver Nuggets just won the NBA championship last night. Yeah. Can you imagine having skill to do any of those things out there, whatever they happen to be, right? That shooting over somebody's fingertips or whatever it is, it looks doable until you try it. <laughs> but when you break it down, it's always simple. It just takes practice. Somebody it figured out repeated. simplicity. I'm not saying we really figured this out. I, it's, 
one of my reps got the first two sentences and changed everything for himself. And somebody discovered that in the numbers and mm -hmm. said, what's this person doing? Well, he was saying, I know I'm an interruption, just like that. And it was so weird. Nobody thought he should say that. He was throwing himself under the bus. Why would you do that? You're taught not to do that. You don't want to do that, but you have to do it because that's how the other person sees you. That's tactical empathy. Didn't know what it was for years until that dinner where Chris Voss took me to school and said, you know, we know this. I mean, that guy sold 20 year jail sentences. That's a sucky product. <laughs> a nice 15 minute meeting. Wow. Wow. Okay. So Chris, this is like, you've got me thinking completely different about something that I just would put out to the very last thing that needed to be done when I know as a CEO of a company and as a consultant and coach for my clients, that that's got to be the first thing you do every day to yep. make the business continue is to make the sales calls. So you made it so easy. You made it so simple. You made it in a in a way that is not icky and uncomfortable. It's not this NLP or this, let oh, me yeah. trick you into doing something or have this, the, the worst stuff that we're all hiding behind, which is email and social media, trying to, you know, build businesses behind that kind of stuff when all we have to do is make a connection with a human. Yeah, it, it really is that simple. I mean, my podcast is about just this. It's called Market Dominance, guys. Uh, it was it was tongue in cheek. It was just an effort from my friend Corey Frank to get a book out of me. And I said, I don't <laughs> have a book. So he said, I'll interview you every Thursday at 7 a.m. for an hour and a half. And we'll just take all the transcripts and give them to an editor and we'll get a book. Well, somehow some podcast person got a hold of something. And, you know, here we are in episode 180, but it's actually just about the same thing over and over, which is with the human voice, if we learn to do it correctly, and we're, we have to be trustworthy, we have to be worthy of other people's trust, we can actually pave our target market with trust. We can let it go from a horrible, bumpy washboard, dirt road with rocks everywhere to being paved, and then we can harvest that over the next 12 quarters. And our competitors are simply left out. They're sealed out because we got the trust and nobody trusts somebody who tries to get somebody to not trust somebody they trust. That's how politics is built. So we can become dominant as long as we have the goods and the will to go out and do it. But it turns out it's one conversation at a time and you need the conversations at pace and scale. You can't have two a day. Like my reps, I was just looking at my team right now. And at this moment, I'm looking at a different screen, but it's right through you. My little team of, this looks like 13 people today, have set 38 meetings, which is nice. But the main thing is they've had 357 conversations. Wow. With decision makers. And that's a good thing. That's a great thing. <laughs> you know? That's a great thing. So... I love it. And it's, and it's just, it's, it's simple and it's moving them through the buyer's journey and getting them onto the first call, right? Through the infamous, scary, icky, cold call, right? But you've made it simple and, and easy and connective with the human on the other side. So I have one more quick question for you. Is your wife still doing this now that she's gotten used to it? <laughs> well, she recently left Microsoft where she'd been for a long time, 14 years. And everybody in the world seems to want her to do something. So she's helping out a company that a friend of hers is now co-CEO of. And uh, I have a feeling they might end up using Connect and Sell. You never know. She doesn't push anything. She wouldn't even talk about it at Microsoft for the years that that she was there because she felt like there was quite properly, there might be some conflict. She's very, very careful. Right. Um, so yeah. we have, you know, the people who use it, it's really funny how they range. Like there's a guy down in Texas and he buys oil and gas rights from ranchers and farmers. And it's not quite a one man shop anymore, but it used to be his first four months of using connect and sell. He had to stop using it because he had to go raise $52 million to buy all the oil and gas rights he'd found. Oh so my sometimes goodness. we'll lose somebody to that and that's fine. And he came back and still a very good customer many, many years later. 
but even some big companies use it. it a lot of solo entrepreneurs do, all sorts of folks. It's just like, you know, you push that button, you've made a commitment to your business at that moment. And that's easier to make that commitment than to go through the frustration of navigating phone systems, talking to gatekeepers and hanging up on voicemail. It's just an easier commitment. It's just your finger. You push yep. the button. And, and hold the, your breath. <laughs> it's, it's, it's cool for a while. Like the little, there's little green bars that show you, oh, we're calling these people and all this. And then your heart rate comes down a little bit and then it goes bloop, but then you're, you're ready to talk. And, and that's fun because now you're connected to another person. I love it. So you're getting rid of all the icky stuff about cold calling and just connecting with the person. I love it. Yeah. All right, Chris, this has been so rewarding for me. And I know the audience listening going, there is another way that I can be successful in cold calling and still make it, make it okay make it doable and something that I know a lot of people are looking for. So where can listeners find out more about you and your company? Well, I'm not very interesting, but the company is connect and sell at connect and sell.com. My strong recommendation is that we do something that sometimes I think is crazy. We let folks use this, this thing, we call it a weapon of market dominance for a whole uh, day for free. And that doesn't sound like much, but if you want to check out another podcast, there's this guy named Tony Safoyan, S-A-F-O-I-A-N. Tony's the CEO founder of a company called Sada Systems. And Sada is Google Cloud's number one partner. They're the number one reseller. So this is a big deal company. And Tony has this great podcast called Cloud and Clear. And he had me on as a guest once. And I, I asked him, I think it's episode 54. So at about minute 20, I asked him, didn't you guys make some money during your connect and sell test drive? And he laughed and his uh, VP, Billy Franz said, Chris, we made tens of millions of dollars pipeline in those three hours. So it's like a lottery ticket. You do the free test drive, you bring your list, bring it as in, you know, it's a file, we'll load it up. We'll quote unquote, teach you how to use connect and sell, which is here's the instruction. See the green button, push Press the green button. <laughs> <laughs> which you won't want to do. You won't want to do it, but you'll do it. And then it'll be kind of interesting. We do about four of these a day. And so about a, a thousand a year. And it's it goes from being something you're talking about to something you're doing. Mm -hmm. And sometimes you set a bunch of meetings. Always, by the way, people will go to your website when you talk to them. So there's like free Google ads that work. Oh. Get the click. They go to your website. You don't have to succeed in setting the meeting. You just have to not be a horrible person and <laughs> they're going to check you out because what else are they going to do while waiting to get off the phone? You know, everybody's always like doing something. So that's my recommendation is, you know, show on up over at the Connect and Sell site. Um, so there's a little form that says, hey, I want a free test drive and uh, have your mind blown. Wow. It's, 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 it's in process. It's already being blown as we speak because it just sounds too good to be true, but I'm sure it's not. So, Hey, this is great. Um, Chris, I, I, I think I'm going to take you up on the offer and try it out myself. And I'll probably have to, you know, hire people to help me out from, from then on forward. Cause it just sounds like it's a fantastic opportunity, but you also do some training, right? You, you work with people and you get them set up and trained in ways that, that they can learn the skills of, of the 27 second call and how to move them forward and become better salespeople. Right. We do that. We offer something called flight school. The model is like a cold call is like taking off an airplane, you know, getting the airplane off the ground, going somewhere. <laughs> that's the value part, dealing with turbulence, the objections, and then landing the meeting. Love it. And so it's a, it's something we offer to groups. So you have to have a few people to, you know, to get a flight school going. It's quite something. It's uh, three hours per session, live calling, really selling stuff being coached on every conversation. It's so intense. The first three hours, you're coached only on the first seven seconds of the conversation, even though you're doing the whole thing. So it's a, it, we, we make masters, uh, people make masters of themselves and we just help them. And then we have some pretty, pretty good coaches around. Uh, Cheryl Turner, who I mentioned, she works for us, but she also does her own stuff. I think she's the finest coach out there, works with CEOs almost exclusively. Love it. 
Love it. Well, thank you, Chris, for sharing. This has been super valuable. Hey, listeners, I know that uh, you've found some ideas to put into your business here with, uh, with Chris's ideas on his introduction call. And I hope you're seeing that it can really benefit your company. I know it has for me. And I hope you reach out to Chris, you test drive the the system he's got, find out how you can really improve your sales um, going forward because it's the foundation of your company, right? Is getting the sales to happen. And and like you said, the, the, the more important way of doing it and the better way of doing it is to pick up the phone and connect with a human. So I think that's fantastic. All right, here's a friendly reminder. Uh, my uh, opportunity is coming up for Accelerate Now, uh, the expert panel on Saturday, July 15th for two hours. Remember, there's four experts and 12 powerful strategies to accelerate your business. And I know that it'll only take one to change the course of your business. So we're giving you 12. You know, you get you get a bunch to choose from. So the registration page is open. Go check it out at Join Accelerate Now. And don't forget to put the word profit with a capital P in there to get your 75% off discount code. We would love to see you there. As always, we would love to hear your questions and feedback. You know, hit us up in the chat and the comments on this podcast feed and tell us what you're what you're thinking. Have you had a success? Did you try Chris's method? Did you try Chris's program to make that simple, easy, uh, challenge-free way of dial dialing and reaching your prospects? We'd love to hear it on there. And while you're at it, subscribe to today's show. You don't want to miss future episodes. And you can always catch Profit with a Plan on any of your favorite podcast players. We're looking forward to more great profitable information on next week's show. So until then, make your plans and profit. Thank you so much.